Welcome y'all, it's Wes with DIY Food Plot Pro. Thank you so much for joining us. We're out in some new trials that we are conducting on the farm. I'm really excited about this. A lot of you followed along the summer food plot trials that we started doing on the farm this year where we tested Nutri-Crave corn, ag corn, two or three of our varieties of corn, soybeans, sunflowers, lab lab, cow peas. I mean, we just did a ton of different tests on our farm where we tested total digestible nutrients, protein levels, mineral content, calcium and phosphorus content. We learned so much about food plotting this summer that I feel like the majority of the industry didn't know. I feel like it was brand new information that we learned and I really wanted to continue that. I think that was extremely useful for myself and I had a ton of folks reach out and be like, man, what you're doing with those trials is just insane and we thank you so much for doing that. So the whole reason for the trials, other than looking at all the things that we already talked about as far as the nutrients and the mineral content was looking at preferences, right? We wanted to see when white tails preferred what food source and i've had a lot of guys reach out and say hey can you give us a video update of some of your plots and i wish that i could but this time of the year i'm a very firm believer in not going into those plots not messing around on the farm i don't mind doing a lot of videoing a lot of shooting in the summer early fall but when you get to the time of year we're in right now, which is mid-October, man, I try to stay off that farm as much as I possibly can. I will say that I spread some seed out uh, overseeding some of the corn food plots a couple weeks ago, and boy, the beast mode is just absolutely killing it. It looks absolutely phenomenal. A lot of evidence of the whitetails eating it. We had also had a lot of overdrive coming up that's looking absolutely phenomenal as well. So a lot of good things on our plots right now, and we are definitely getting pictures of a ton of whitetails utilizing our plots. Now, I think that will continue to increase throughout the winter. Right now, food is not a limiting factor for whitetails. Acorns, white oak, northern red oak acorns are everywhere. Crops are just now getting harvested. So there's actually still a lot of standing corn in the field around here. There's some standing beans in the field. Food's not a limiting factor right now. Will be soon, but as of right now, it is not. 100% for sure see the use and the uptick of these food plots go up as we get further into fall. So we're out today and we're looking at uh, a tr another trial that we're doing. I, I learned so much from the summer trial that I wanted to continue that. Uh, what you can see in the picture is a type of oats that is growing here. Right next to it, we have a type of cereal rye. We have some purple top turnips and we have some winter wheat all in this one field. And so by doing this, we're basically setting this experiment up just exactly how we set the summer experiments up, right? We have planted three different types of cereal grains and we're going to see what preference these whitetails have. Is there any preference? So, so far I can tell that the oats are growing off way faster than anything else. There's no question about that. I'm a little surprised at that, to be honest with you, but the oats definitely are growing off faster than the cereal rye or the winter wheat. I have a feeling what I think will be the case here, and I think the oats will win out. I think they'll be the most preferred food source that we have out here, but that's why we do trials, right? I think that's how we learn. That's how we look and objectively decide what to plant on our farms is we go through this process of testing these seeds and we decide what seed or what variety we need to plant on our farms for the following year. And that's exactly what we're doing with this winter trial. As time goes along, we will put exclusion cages, we'll put multi exclusion cages out here and we're gonna try to figure out what the whitetails are hitting, when they're hitting it, and what's the most preferred. So what I like to do in a lot of my mixes is I blend all three of these together. I blend oats, cereal rye, and winter wheat all into one. And my product is called Overdrive. I've had a lot of success with that. I always love oats. I think they're my favorite of the three. Oats can winter kill in areas if you're far enough up north or you have a harsh enough winter, oats can die out. So I never recommend to anybody to plant 100% oats. I just think that's too risky. I think you're taking a gigantic risk there that if you have it a below average winter, or say you live up north, you're not gonna have anything. These oats will winter kill where the sewer rye and the winter wheat will not. That's why I'm blending all three of these. Will deer have a preference? That's what we're trying to learn right here. Do deer like cereal rye or winter wheat or oats the best? I know what I believe, what I think I've seen over the years, but I can't tr objectively say that I put all three of these in one plot and monitored that for browse pressure to see which one the whitetails key in on. Maybe there's no difference. If there's no difference, then 
there's no sense in paying the premium for the oats because the oats are most expensive of these three. There's no question about that. But if deer like winter wheat just as good as they like oats and we don't have to mess with the winter kill and winter wheat's significantly cheaper than oats is. So if there's no difference, then we'll just plant winter wheat and we'll go on with it. But if our deer like the oats better and that's gonna keep them on our farm more, if our neighbor has winter wheat and we have oats, then we wanna plant oats. We wanna plant whatever is going to keep deer on our property for as long as we possibly can keep them on our property. So that's the whole point of this trial is to figure out what these whitetails are eating, when they're eating it, and what their preference is. And we will go through, just like we did in the summer, we'll take samples here in the wintertime and we will check the nutrient content of all these plots that are out here. We're gonna check the nutrient content, the protein, the total digestible nutrients. We're gonna look at every single bit of that and we're gonna break that down just like we did in our summer food plot program so that we can have a better idea of what to plant in our food plots. I'm really excited about this. Got a great stand. We were able to get a little bit of rain last week to get this stuff up and growing. Yeah, this is literally only a week's worth of growth and it just looks beautiful out here right now. So really excited about this. I think we're gonna learn a tremendous amount from this once again, these trials. I really wanna continue these trials through the years and continue helping as many food plotters as what I possibly can. Manage your land for the biggest mature buck that you could possibly grow in your area. If you need help setting up your deer hunting farms, you can go to my website, www.diyfoodplotpro.com. Click on boots on the ground consultation boots on the ground visit and I will come to your farm this winter and we'll develop a plan for it to make that farm hunt as best as it possibly can with designing access, screening, food plots, standing blind locations, mock scrape, water holes, the whole nine yards will be in that plan. It'll be a full blueprint of what you need to turn that farm into the best hunting property in the neighborhood. So if that's something that interests you, you can go to my website, www.diyfoodplotpro.com. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Y'all smash that like and subscribe button.